Their wings are marvels of natural engineering. But to see how they lift a dragonfly into the air, we need to slow the action down. In principle, it looks fairly simple. Each wing beats down, pushing on the air below, so lifting the dragonfly up. But each beat also creates another air current that lifts the dragonfly in a very different way. And I can demonstrate it using this strip of paper to represent a wing. If I blow across the top of it, it'll rise. Watch. That is because the faster it moves, the lower its pressure. So I created a lower pressure above the wing, and in consequence, it was sucked upwards. The problem for a flying animal is to recreate that difference in airspeed. The way the dragonfly does this is remarkable. As it moves through the air, we can see that it twists its wings at different angles. On the powerful downbeat, it holds them at a slight upwards angle to the air flow. And this produces an extraordinary effect above the wing. It creates a swirl behind the leading edge, which spins the air round, increasing the speed of the air current over the top of the wing. And just a tiny increase in speed generates a significant upwards force, lifting up the wing and the dragonfly. The dragonfly can then change the direction of its wing beats to propel it forwards as well as upwards. Remarkably, a dragonfly can beat each of its four wings independently. And that enables it to perform an astonishing variety of maneuvers. It can hover. It can glide. It can even fly backwards. For maximum power, it beats both pairs together and can make really sharp turns. So the very first dragonflies were able to extend their territories far and wide. And as more insects joined them in the skies, the dragonflies had the skills to be deadly aerial hunters. The ability to fly brought great advantages to those early insects. It enabled them to find food, to escape from predators, and particularly important, to travel to new territories in search of a mate. 